everybody. Gene here. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, where every single week we answer the most common and uncommon questions about tapping an EFT so you can eliminate self-sabotage and take the action that you want. I wanted to read a little piece of feedback. If you are on my mailing list, getting reminders about the content, the resources, other things that are going on in the tapping world, if you unsubscribe, there is the opportunity when you're unsubscribing to give me a little feedback to let me know why you are unsubscribing. And most people leave that blank, which is fine. And some people are like cleaning out my inbox. It's the beginning of the year. There are too many email messages. I don't read everything or I'm subscribed to duplicate places. All of that's fine. So this is the feedback that I received a couple of weeks ago after I'd sent out an email um, offering a discount because it was my birthday. And the comment was, I can't see how anyone can justify charging for tapping. I can get the same results with YouTube videos. I hate that there are such greedy people in the world capitalizing off of the sadness and sorrow of vulnerable people. Karma is all I can say. So first of all, I appreciate the fact that someone was willing to tell me where they are. I always like getting good, honest feedback. Second, I appreciate any time someone unsubscribes from my mailing list because it's not right for them. I don't ever take something like that personally. But clearly there was a miscommunication here between why I create the resources I create and how they perceived them. So I have, on Monday, I sent out an email explaining why Tapping Q&A exists and why the Tapping Q&A podcast exists and all that stuff. I have reprinted that on my website if you haven't seen it. So if you'd like to hear my response to this and why Tapping Q&A exists and why I do what I do, all you need to do is go to tappingqna.com slash karma. That's tappingqna.com slash K-A-R-M-A. And you can hear why Tapping Q&A exists. This is Gene Mantra Stelly, and welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 426, originally aired January 29th, 2020. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Today, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to share a really simple four-step process with you around the idea of what should be the goal of a tapping round. And where this has come from is over the course of the last number of months, as I have been looking at my life and I've been working with lots of clients on transformation, I have started to recalibrate what I am trying to do and what I'm trying to achieve with an individual tapping session or taking a few moments out of my day and tap. And for years, I have always been one who is very hesitant to talk about one minute miracles and one session miracles, because I think when we talk about the edge cases of tapping, the really extreme, super fast transformations, I think we end up doing tapping a disservice. Because if we present the really miraculous things, which totally happen with tapping. I've seen it in my own life and I've seen it with my clients. But if we talk about the best case scenario as the normal case scenario, what we are doing is we are setting ourselves up and we are setting new tappers up for failure because we are not creating realistic expectations. And in many cases, happiness is outcome divided by expectation. And what I mean by that is, if I told you yesterday at work, I crossed 10 things off of my to-do list, is that a good day or is that a bad day? Well, it depends on what my expectation was. If I expected to get eight things done yesterday and I got 10 of them done, I'm backflipping my way out of the office because it was such an awesome day. If I'm in a situation where I expected to get 14 things done and I only got 10 things done, then I'm really disappointed. That my expectation for the day is going to interpret how I feel about something. I can remember one time I was working with a client who was very hesitant to try tapping and was reluctant and didn't really believe. And at the beginning of the tapping session, we started from a place of her feeling as if this tapping thing doesn't work. 15 minutes later, she was super frustrated because a single round of tapping didn't knock out this deep childhood issue. And so in a course of 15 minutes, her expectations changed radically. 
And so these one minute miracles and these one session miracles, if we talk about them as this is what normally happens, then we're setting ourselves up to be really disappointed. And when we're disappointed in a protocol, we don't come back to it again. It doesn't work the way we expect it. I'm not going to invest the time and energy in it. And so it's important that we have realistic expectations of what is supposed to come out of a tapping session. And even with that being my disposition for a number of years, over the course of the last six months, I've started to recalibrate even more about what we are trying to achieve. And the recalibration has come more around a single round of tapping or a few minutes of tapping. So if I'm doing 30 minutes or an hour with a client, this might be the goal inside a portion of the session. If I'm tapping during the day on my own, this is a great thing to do to kind of reset myself as I'm moving forward. And as we navigate this in a bigger way, I think it helps us set up realistic expectations. And the goal is this, is to choose what is the next best resource state that I could be in that I can reach for. And so what I mean by that is in resource state is how I am in this particular moment. And my resource state in this moment is a number of things. It's how much energy do I have? It's how much focus do I have? It's what is running through my mind? Is my mind clear or is it chattering with lots of stuff? It's the emotion that I'm feeling in this moment. And so all of those things dictate my resource state because it tells you how much resource I have in order to do the next thing. And so if I'm doing something small, like I am folding my laundry It's okay if I'm in a diminished resource state because I can fold laundry, distracted, overwhelmed, tired, angry, all of those things. But if I'm trying to do something that really requires my focus or my attention, such as working with a client or recording a podcast like this, being really angry is a bad resource state for me to be in when I'm doing that. Being really tired is a bad resource state when dealing with that. Um, A couple of years ago, I was dealing with a viral infection. And as we were healing and transforming that viral infection, it so wiped me out that basically when I was not working with clients, I was laying down. Like if I wasn't talking to someone, I had to lay down because my resource state was so diminished. And so the goal then becomes, what is the next best resource state? And I think this does a couple of things. First, is it transforms our expectation about what we're trying to achieve. If I set my goal lower, it's going to be much easier to achieve that goal, which means I'm going to feel good about the tapping, which means I'm going to continue. And that doesn't mean that we just set a low standard and then we're done with that. As you see in the process, it's a recursive process that we get to go through multiple times as we move up the resource state ladder, but it transforms our expectations. The second thing it does is Oftentimes, when we're dealing with discomfort, the only thing we're noticing is the discomfort and we want to be out of it. I am frustrated. I'm sad. I'm overwhelmed. I'm angry. And I want to not be those things. And so I've gotten into the habit in my own personal tapping. And when I'm working with clients is to ask the question, okay, great. So that is where you are. What is the next best available resource state? that you could be in? Or what would you like to experience instead? Right now you're nervous? What would you like to feel instead? Because depending on who you are and what you're doing, you might have different choices. So I'm nervous. Some circumstances, instead of being nervous, what I want to be is calm. Or I'm feeling nervous, and instead what I'd like to do is I'd like to feel a sense of urgency. And for me, a sense of urgency isn't overwhelming. It's like, oh, there's a lot to get done. I need to be on point. I need to do this efficiently. So if I am nervous before I speak in front of a group of people, I want to be calm. If I'm nervous because I'm not going to get everything done today, I want to have a sense of urgency so I stay focused and sharp. And so by asking the question, it gives us the ability to reframe what we would like to have next And so this helps us to recognize the progress that we're making and we're tapping, but it also directs the tapping. So I'm not just saying this is what I'm experiencing, but we're saying, and this is what I would like to move to. And it gives myself and my system the chance to start figuring out how to get to that spot. One way and an easy way to think about something like this 
is to think in terms of an emotional scale. Now, there are lots and lots of emotional scales that are out there. Some of them are in a linear fashion where they move up and down. Some of them are a circle where you can move right or left or across. They're just different ways to visualize the way that we think about emotions. But if we think, for example, of an emotional scale, a great example of this, you know, as we're choosing the next resource, we're making a step up. If I am depressed, on most emotional scales, the emotion that is above depressed is anger. And now that seems a little odd that that is a step up. But in reality, that is an emotional step up. When I am depressed or if I'm experiencing despair, I am demotivated, I have no energy, and I'm just laying around doing nothing. I don't know if you've ever been in a spot of despair, but it's really hard to get moving forward because despair means we don't believe it's going to get better. So why are we wasting time with our action? Anger is the energy of fighting back. I perceive an attack and so I'm willing to fight back to take care of myself. And so anger implies action. Now, anger doesn't necessarily imply good action. It doesn't necessarily imply thoughtful action. And it's certainly not a place that I want to live in the long term. But when I'm struggling with something and I move from depressed to angry, then I'm more willing to make thoughtful choices. Now, I'll give you a perfect example. I have um, a friend of mine who is in a circumstance where he has a relationship that he's really struggling with. And over the course of the last couple of months, he has been saddened in a sense of despair as he's watched a loved one go through something really, really hard. A couple of weeks ago when we had a conversation, as he was sharing what was going on in his life, he basically vented for 45 minutes where he was really angry in the way that he was being treated by his partner. And he was really angry in the things that he was suffering with as he was trying to navigate the day and deal with what was going on. And as much as my heart continues to break because of the circumstance he's going through, In the back of my head, as we were having this conversation, I was actually doing a little bit of a happy dance because he was finally fighting for himself. And at the end of the venting of anger, there was a, okay, I need to start creating a plan. And over the course of the next couple of days, he started making a plan and reaching out for resources and talking to people who had been through the circumstance he had been through. So he knows what it looks like going forward. And so by making one step up the emotional scale to an emotion that I will admit is not a great deal of fun, it made a huge difference because he was in a better resource state. And so as you're learning how to do this, as you're learning how to navigate this, search emotional scales, find one online that works for you, and and then use that as a framework. Or as you'll see in the process, we can just ask the simple question of what we want. So this is how I apply this idea to the tapping that I do now. And it's a a really simple four-step process that as you work through this process, you can take notes, you can work through answers, you can tap along, you can figure out what's going on. So the first part of it is, where am I now? What am I experiencing? What are the facts of my circumstance? How do the facts of my circumstance impact me? So we're just describing what is going on, just giving a blow by blow as if you were telling a friend what is going on in your life and you're updating them. Number two is how do I feel about where I am now? And so now that you've described the details, this makes me feel in this moment, the prominent emotion is it is difficult because, and so we're giving our emotional response. We are reporting on our resource state. This is overwhelming. I am tired. I am sad. I am frustrated. I am afraid that if I walk in the front door, I'm so angry, I'm going to kick the cat. Whatever it is, just describe what that emotional state is. The third thing is, what would I like to feel next? If I could replace the emotion and the resource state that I'm in, what is the resource state that I want to be? And I would encourage you to make this a really small step up the emotional scale because there are very few times in my own life where I am able in a single step to jump 14 rungs up an emotional scale. I rarely go from dismayed to euphoric. Like it's possible. Again, I'm open to the possibility of these things happening really, really quickly 
but I also understand my own humanity and how I navigate this stuff. And so jumping that many rungs up the emotional scale is not something that is probably going to happen for me. And so therefore I need to be more focused in a specific way that the progress becomes reasonable. And then I start tapping and the tapping. I just go through the three steps that I just went through. I describe what is going on. I describe my resource state right now. And I describe the resource state that I would like to be in. And I name why that resource state is valuable. If I was feeling urgent right now, instead of nervous, then I would able to be focused and I would be able to make really good thoughtful actions. So I'm just making a a declaration of why I want to move up the emotional scale in that way. After I've done tapping, working through these things, stating what's going on, stating how I feel, stating the resource states I'd like to be in and why, I then check back in after doing the tapping and I see what my resource state is. Now, if I have moved up a rung up the resource ladder, then I get to describe where I am now. So instead of being dismayed, I'm angry. Now, when I re-describe it, I now get the opportunity to go, okay, is the new resource state enough for me to be able to do what I want in this moment? Not saying that I'm satisfied necessarily with being not fully resourced and not feeling great in the moment, but being able to go, okay, I'm now in a place where I can keep moving. Because if I'm tapping in the middle of my workday, I don't have the time often to move six or seven rungs up the resource scale. But if I move up one or two rungs, then I'm able to start being productive and then I can worry about tapping more at the end of the day or on the weekend or the next time I work with my practitioner. If I am in the exact same spot or if I've moved up a step or two, but still would like to move up higher up the resource scale, then I just repeat the process again. I now state what is going on right now. Because after we do some tapping like this, sometimes the details that we notice and the facts as we understand them change, sometimes they stay exactly the same. The second thing we do is we now describe the resource state that we are in. I feel my energy level is, and we just go through that. Again, some of it might be the same from the previous time, or it might be a new resource state. Step three, and we state the new resource state that we would want. So if we moved up the scale, what is the next higher rung? What is the next higher way I can feel? If we haven't moved up enough, we just restrate where we'd like to go. And then we tap. And then we repeat the process again. We go back to the beginning. We tune in where we are. We see what the resource state is. We see if we want to move up. And by doing this in these small incremental recursive steps, recursive where we just do the process over and over again, It's going to put us in a position where we keep moving up the emotional scale, where we're better resourced, which is going to allow us to make more thoughtful, deliberate choices in the moment. And so all of this is to say, I am not dismissing the fact that we can have total transformation and total healing with a single round of tapping at any given moment. But instead, by thinking in this way, we are setting ourselves up to move up the emotional scale so we make better choices in the moment. So for me, this tapping isn't about just how I feel, but what I'm able to do by changing the way I feel in the moment. Because if I'm really, really, really emotional, it's hard for me to take action. And so this is a great way for us to get out of our way with tapping and take the action that we want. As always, I would love to hear your feedback on this process and this disposition. Is this something that resonates? Do you think about the healing process in a different way? I love feedback, as I mentioned at the top, even if it's feedback of disagreement and negative. I really want to know how this stuff is landing in the world, because when I do that, it gives me the opportunity to reevaluate the stuff that I'm sharing to share in a way that becomes more useful as we move forward, because that's one of the three reasons why, as I laid out in that letter at the beginning, that tapping Q&A exists is I want it to be a useful resource that you can use. If you know someone in your life who could use a resource like this, please be our ambassador. Pass it along. Don't spam your inbox. Don't send it to everybody in the world. But if there's someone you know who would appreciate something like this, pass it along. The easiest way someone finds a new resource is from the recommendation of a friend. And if the people in our lives are healthier, it's just a better world for all of us. And that's super cheesy, but it's also super true. And so this is an opportunity for us to be an agent of change with the people around us. 
If you have not done so, I would really encourage you to subscribe to the Tapping Q&A podcast. In podcasting parlance, subscribe is always free everywhere you find audio. And that's the beautiful thing about the podcast universe now is it's all over the place. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, basically anywhere you listen to audio if you type in tapping Q&A, you'll be able to find the podcast. If you're subscribed, then you are not going to miss episodes as they come out. Because at the moment, we're redoing old bonus podcasts every Monday. We're producing new episodes every Wednesday. It's free content that is just waiting for you so that you can continue to transform your life and get the more, more out of your tapping. If you have a question, if you have a comment, if you have a topic you'd like me to cover in the future, please reach out. I'm actually the next podcast I'm going to record for next week came from a recommendation of a listener and it was such a great idea. I didn't even realize I hadn't done a podcast on that before. Let me know who you'd like to hear from, what topics you'd like us to cover. I can always be reached Gene, G-E-N-E at tapping Q and A. If you're in the website, just click on the contact link up in the menu if you happen to be in the Tapping Q&A app, which is absolutely free for both Android and Apple devices, click the contact link. You can send me an email or voice message from right inside of the app. If you don't have the app, download it. It has the entire archive of the Tapping Q&A podcast, such a bunch of other bonus content like tapping scripts that you can just read right on your smartphone. It's absolutely free. There's over 460 audios just waiting for you. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrostelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Montrostelli Tapping Q&A. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Montrostelli and Tapping Q&A.